How's it going, kids? Good morning. It is time to worship. I have missed you all. Listen, if you haven't already, go get your capes because it's time to party. But listen, before we get started, we need to warm up. Who's ready to warm up? I am. Okay, so grab your capes, put them on. I have my famous Mr. Maui cape and I am so excited to worship. So first warm up we're gonna do is jumping jacks. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Ah, jumping jacks. Next, we're gonna spin around. Whoa, whoa. whoa. I was getting dizzy. Last one, we're gonna jump up and down. And wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. Oh, I don't know about you kids, but I'm all warmed up and I am ready to worship. Let's do it.
This is awesome. Hey, how's it going, kids? This right here is not an ordinary belt. This is the belt of truth. Let me put it on real quick. Whew. Woo! That looks awesome. Now you may be thinking, what's the belt of truth? It's not just an ordinary belt. The belt of truth is something that God tells us to keep with us at all times. What's truth? I'll tell you what truth is. Truth is being honest at all times, no matter what. Always being honest. And here's the thing, guys. Truth is not always easy, but it is always the best thing to do. Being truthful is not always the easiest thing to do, but it is the best thing to do. Think about it. When your parents ask you, hey, did you break this? If you lie and say no, you'll get into way more trouble later. But if you be honest, everything is on the table. The truth sets you free. And lies, they just get you in more trouble. You can even ask my good friends, Adam and Eve. They got into some big trouble because they believed the lies of the devil. But let's see if you can spot the devil's lies using the belt of truth, which is always being honest. Check it out. In the beginning, God created absolutely everything, including the first two people, Adam and Eve. He placed them in a garden named Eden. They had all of the food they wanted. Nothing bad ever happened. Adam and Eve were very happy. That's because God himself was with them. God loved them so much, he came looking for them every day. Adam, Eve, where are you? When Adam and Eve heard God's voice, they ran to him. God loved Adam and Eve very much, and they loved God right back. God gave them everything in the garden to enjoy, but there was one tree they could not eat from. God said if they ate from that tree, they would die. A serpent came to Eve, but he wasn't just any serpent. He was Satan in disguise. Did God really say not to eat from any of the trees in this garden? No, that's not what he said. He said we could eat from any tree we want to, except that one. If we do, even if we touch it, we will die. Are you sure? I think God is holding out on you. He knows if you eat the fruit from that tree, you will become like him. Sounds to me like this God of yours isn't telling you the whole truth. Eve listened to what the serpent said. That was her first mistake. Then she looked at the tree God told her not to eat from. That was her second mistake. The more Eve looked at the fruit on that tree, the yummier it seemed. Soon she wanted that fruit more than she wanted to believe and obey God. So Eve picked the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to Adam, who ate it too. The serpent was very happy, but Adam and Eve were not. Suddenly, they realized they were naked. This time, when Adam and Eve heard the voice of God, they didn't run to him like they had before. Instead, they hid. Still, God searched for them. Adam, Eve, where are you? Over here, God. I heard you coming and I hid because I was naked. When God heard Adam's words, he was filled with a deep, deep sadness. Who told you you were naked? Did you eat from the tree I told you not to eat from? It was the woman you gave me. She gave me the fruit. It, it was the serpent. He tricked me. God was sad. He knew nothing would ever be the same. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. That's sin, and sin separates people from God. Sin had come into the world. Adam and Eve had to leave the garden God had just made for them. It was a very sad day. But even though the world would never be the same, God already had a plan to fix our broken friendship with Him. So even though this is the end of this story, it wasn't really the end at all. You see, all of this happened in the beginning. Kids, did it work? Did your belt of truth work? Were you able to spot the lies of the devil? What did he lie to Adam and Eve about? Did he lie about the animals? Did he lie about the grass? No. Did he lie about the water? No. Ah, 
The devil lied to Adam and Eve about eating from the tree that God told them not to eat from. And the consequences were not good. See, because Adam and Eve lied to God, God pushed them out of the garden. But here's the thing, kids. I'm going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. We all will mess up sometimes. And God will never stop loving us because of that. But you must always remember, kids, always have your belt of truth. It is the truth that sets you free. Let's go ahead and pray, kids. God, we thank you so much. Thank you that you have given us the truth. And thank you that we can always live lives of being honest because you will always take care of us no matter what. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The armor of God fits good on me. It makes me strong as I can be. I can stand against the enemy Cause the armor of God fits good on me Put on the belt of truth My good news boots Getting dressed and ready to go The shield of faith The sword I raise God's word is what I know With all my might I'll do what's right With the armor Godliness, my helmet's on, my salvation. Now I can stand strong and pray. Cause the armor of God fits good on me, it makes me strong as I can be. I can stand against the enemy. Cause the armor of God fits good on me. Put on the belt of truth. My good news boots, getting dressed and ready to go. The shield of faith, the sword I raise, God's word is what I know. With all my might, I'll do what's right with the armor of godliness. My helmet's on, my salvation, now I can stand strong and pray. Cause the armor of God fits good on me. It makes me strong as I can be I can stand against the enemy Cause the armor of God fits good on me The armor of God fits good on me Good on me, good on me The armor of God fits good on me Good on me, good on me in your house clean your room take out the garbage do your homework no fighting maybe you don't like rules i don't always either but you know what obeying our parents is really important we should do it for two reasons first we should obey god because the bible says so our memory verse says obey your parents for this pleases the lord now if you don't have a parrot you can always obey your dog or your cat. No, not your parrot. Your parents. Obey your parents. Oh, that makes more sense. Now, I don't know about you, but if obeying your parents pleases God, then that's what I want to do. So we're done, right? That's it. Obey your parents because the Bible says so. No, there's another reason. We should also obey our parents for our protection. Let me demonstrate with this hula hoop. This is a big O for obedience. Think of obeying like staying inside the boundaries, you know, inside the circle. Stay inside the boundaries your parents have set and you are safe. Step outside the circle and the masked menace will get you. So one time my mom told me to do my homework but I really wanted to watch my favorite TV show. And another time, my parents told me to stop bugging my sister, but she just looks so lonely. And when my dad asked me to take out the garbage, I kinda got distracted on the way. Get the idea? Just obey. It's for your protection. 
And one more thing. If you want to survive and win as a kid, then don't forget the ice. It's a simple way to remember how to obey. We should obey immediately, cheerfully, and exactly. So kids, don't forget. Obey your parents. together. Don't forget kids, always be honest, even when it's tough. All right kids, I'll see you next week. Bye!